a horror story, the victim keeps asking why. But there can be no explanation, and there shouldn't be one. The unanswered mystery is what stays with us the longest. Long in development and bearing a strong pedigree, Alan Wake is finally here. But don't let its literary aspirations fool you. Though it weaves a heavy mood, this horror game puts an emphasis on action, and it's just as exhilarating as it is frightening. You'd expect as much from the creators of Max Payne. Has the wait been worth it? Cheer up, handsome. We're here. <laughs> the loose sheets of paper were pages from a manuscript entitled Departure. That was the name I planned to use for the next novel I had never gotten started. Alan Wake, a successful author of hard-boiled thrillers, is afflicted by a dreaded condition that could threaten his very livelihood, writer's block. Hoping to get away for a spell and recharge his batteries, he takes his wife on vacation to the sleepy, idyllic northwestern town of Bright Falls. Friendly if prying locals? Check. Breathtaking views? Check. A reservation at a lonely, charming, rundown lodge situated at the center of a lake? Check too. What can go wrong? It's not like that. That's not... Alan? Quite a bit, and it's evident from the game's nightmarish outset. The picturesque town of Bright Falls is the perfect setting for backwoods horror, and Alan Wake utilizes it expertly to weave some truly harrowing moments. The story is structured episodically, and the game takes you where it needs to in order to tell it. The result feels well-paced, less like a sequence of game levels, and more like, well, a serialized TV show. Were the script better, the story would be the total package, but it's hard to really believe in the characters. Alan Wake, a novelist from New York, takes to his role as spirit-slaying action hero a little too readily. The supporting cast is uniformly worse, routinely yanking you out of the brilliantly maintained atmosphere with absurd dialogue. All I'm saying is you gotta throw me a bone here, bestseller. For a group of people combating a formless horror that's seemingly able to conform their very surroundings to its vile whims, Wake and his friends sure do take their situation lightly. Any second now and Stucky would be knocking on the door with his axe like Nicholson in The Shining. It's a shame given everything that the game does right. It allows its story to unfold around you rather than dictate it through cutscenes, and it provides plenty of supplemental material in the form of in-game objects and manuscript pages that help paint the world and give the story context. The narrative-driven gameplay sequences are also done well, but too often a bad character or goofy line will pull the curtain back and you'll find yourself sitting on your couch playing an action game. I don't! Just don't! I don't want to hear it! God damn it, Alice! <laughs> I couldn't remember. I'd been driving too fast down a coastal road to get there. Alan Wake makes superb use of a limited tool set to deliver a relentlessly paced experience. Make no mistake, the game is linear, and though you're encouraged to ignore the ever-present waypoint and creep into the shadows to stock up on ammo or retrieve a hidden collectible, you're never off script for too long. The experience is all about taking you from point A to point B in style, and it smartly plays on our elemental fear of the dark. It gets a lot of mileage out of having you stumble around places shrouded in shadow while doing everyday video game things, like finding keys to locked doors, solving rudimentary environmental puzzles, or shooting down spirit-possessed hillbillies. It's a testament to how well the game is paced that it never feels repetitive. Alan Wake, the character, has a similarly spare tool set. His arsenal is mostly comprised of stuff you wouldn't be surprised to find in a backwater logging camp or tipped over utility van. Pistols, hunting rifles, and shotguns, complemented by flare guns and flashbangs. His most valuable tool, by far, is his flashlight, which illuminates his path in the shadow-soaked world and keeps the darkness at bay when it takes hostile form. In Alan Wake, a light source serves as an oasis of safety. When you reach a checkpoint, you'll frequently have to jumpstart a generator to turn on a flood lamp before your progress is saved, quite often while a pack of bloodthirsty hillbillies are nipping at your heels. Though much of the game feels like a harried struggle for survival, it's far from a one-note experience. You'll do plenty of fighting against the Taken, which is what they call the spirit-possessed locals, but before the last episode wraps, you'll have contended with rooms full of murderous poltergeists, driven your fair share of miles down spooky backwoods highways and over the bodies of Taken, and rambled through the streets of Bright Falls, mixing with the locals while trying to get to the bottom of Wake's strange condition. There are plenty of set-piece sequences, all well done, and the best ones are unforgettable. The darkness that was pursuing me was growing stronger and it was taking over everything in its path. Alan Wake is six episodes long, and each will take you anywhere from an hour or two and change to complete, depending on how much you dally. Whether it's due to its actual length or how relentless it feels, it's over before you know it. Though the ending is unambiguous about one thing, there will be more episodes coming.
Thank you for coming here with me. I love you too. Go on. I'll promise to behave. <laughs> You're my best friend, and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. Whether or not it cares to call itself one, Alan Wake is an action game, with one with brutally satisfying mechanics to boot. Though light is your ally in the battle against the darkness made flesh, flashing a lantern at the faces of your enemies only goes so far. If you want to put a bad spirit down for good, you'll have to resort to conventional weapons. Most of the time. Wake always rolls with a flashlight and weapon akimbo, using the latter to aim the former. Flashing your light's beam causes enemies to rear back, but it drains its power quickly. This being a game at least partly designed around survival horror conventions, you have to conserve your batteries along with your ammo, especially since some enemies can only be killed with light, like possessed objects and flocks of spirit birds. Being caught under-equipped is typically a bad thing, as your enemies are way stronger than you, more than easily able to tear you to pieces if you can't keep them at bay. When you're fully equipped, you have tons of options to cope with the onslaughts, but they can get truly hectic. Dealing as you are with beings who revile the light, the oddest implements become lethal weapons. Case in point, flashbangs. In other games, they serve to merely buy you time to reposition yourself, but in Alan Wake, they vaporize everything in sight, from the lowliest stalker to the deadliest animated object. If you're getting mobbed, you can drop a flare to give yourself some breathing room. If things are really bad, pop off a round of your flare gun and watch the Taken explode as if hit by an RPG round. That flashlight's kid stuff. The flares will keep the bastards away. Whether you're having it out with waves of Taken or exercising the darkness out of a possessed object with the battery-operated lantern, combat is uniformly satisfying in Alan Wake. The feedback is brilliant, and the encounters are accompanied by a genuine sense of dread. You really do feel like these hatchet-wielding atrocities could tear you limb from limb if you give them an inch. Alan Wake certainly paints a believable picture. Were it not for the fact that you know precisely what happens when the sun goes down, Bright Falls looks like the kind of place you'd want to go to get away from it all. There isn't a fraction of the place that feels like a game level. Even when it's at its most game-like, it completely sells you on the realness of its environments. Not surprisingly, the game makes expert use of lighting to put you in some truly frightening places. When the wind picks up and the dark presence starts to whip up the shadows, you start to see the darnest things crawling out of the corner of your eye. The audio contributes to the mood in a big way. When the darkness begins to roil, all sorts of disembodied sounds will alarm and unnerve you. When the combat starts in earnest, the whooshes of flying hatchets and whirs of chainsaws will add to the feeling of impending dread. Alan Wake's presentation fires on all cylinders, selling you completely on its twisted nightmare. It was wild and dark and weird, even by my standards. Alice! Alan Wake paints a vivid nightmare that you won't soon forget. It's the freshest take on the horror game in a long time, and every moment feels like it was painstakingly scripted. There isn't much fluff here. That said, the game is lacking in the frills that we've come to expect from a AAA release. If you're fine with paying full price for a finely crafted single-player experience, then you won't regret your jaunt to Bright Falls. <laughs>